In the past two weeks, the global AI playground has completely changed, and some are saying that this is the long-awaited bursting of the AI bubble. I have a brief summary of all you need to know, and I want to explain why I don't think the bubble is bursting quite yet. On January 21st, Donald Trump announced the Stargate project, named after the 1994 movie Stargate. It's supposed to symbolize a wormhole into an ancient pyramid. I guess. It's not a governmental project, but an umbrella for private investors to pour money into AI. The investors currently include OpenAI, SoftBank, Oracle, and the Abu Dhabi-based investment fund MGX. The initial investment is 100 billion, and by 2029, it's supposed to reach 500 billion, at least that's the plan. Elon Musk promptly rained on Trump's parade and claimed that they don't actually have even the 100 billion dollars. Just two days later, Later, the Chinese firm DeepSea released another open source AI model called R1, a reasoning model similar to GPT 4.0, and briefly afterwards, an image generation model called Janus Pro. Neither is the absolute best in its category, but among the best. This made it clear that China is not behind on AI, and if we factor in the possibility that they're not telling us the whole story, maybe China's actually ahead of the rest of the world. World. What really upset the Americans, though, is that the Chinese say they can do AI equally good but at vastly lower cost and with less powerful chips. The numbers that have been circulating are that they did with $6 million what cost OpenAI more than $100 million and may do with 2,000 GPUs where OpenAI used 100,000. To add insult to injury, DeepSeek is built on Meta's open-sourced Llama and was most likely trained on GPT output, which absolutely no one could have seen coming. The DeepSeek people said they did it with a lot of small efficiency improvements that add up to a major difference. There's been some discussion about whether they're just faking numbers, and some have pointed out that the approximately $6 million was for the V3 training, not for the more powerful model, so it's an underestimate. But my impression from expert commentaries is that while we can quibble about the exact numbers, the efficiency gain and cost reduction Production is broadly speaking plausible. In response, Nvidia stocks plunged 17%, wiping out more than half a trillion in value, and Gary Marcus declared that OpenAI may well become the WeWork of AI. WeWork, as a reminder, was an American company whose business model was to lease office space. That's not much of a business model, you might say, but investors put a lot of money into it nevertheless. They went bankrupt at the end of 2023. Gary Marcus has also repeatedly said that OpenAI gives him Theranos vibes. Yes, we have an AI bubble in the sense that many, if not most, of the existing AI companies are hugely overvalued, but I don't think the AI bubble is yet ready to burst. The most likely reason Nvidia stocks plunge is that the DeepSeek announcement further devalued the American AI companies which buy their chips from NVIDIA. But if the AI training costs come down, this will open the market for many more players. I expect the stock market to recover because ultimately this is good news for technology development and the economy, not bad news. When will the bubble burst? It'll burst when it becomes clear that the current AIs, which are a specific type known as large language models, will never become profitable. As we discussed previously, some experts, including Jean Le Coeur and Gary Marcus, doubt that large language models will ever get us to general intelligence, and I agree with them. But the market will only react to this once it becomes clear that the existing large language models can't be rescued with further updates. At that point, a lot of money will evaporate like this. But at the moment, the Stargate project is just pumping more money into an existing bubble. Building power plants, extending the grid, and improving data infrastructure generally seems like a good idea, and all these are part of the Stargate project. But to me, the Stargate project is as crazy as if Americans had taken the first semiconductors and spent $500 billion in factories to produce them, rather than letting markets do their thing and wait for technological development. 
developments to make microchips smaller and cheaper, that is, to wait for them to make economic sense. It's like the dot-com bubble, except instead of getting free t-shirts from pets.com, we get hallucinating chatbots and 17-hour debates about whether sentience can be monetized. That said, the arrival of DeepSeek drives home an important message. You can save a lot of money if you let Americans do the heavy lifting and then build on that knowledge. And that goes well with the European approach, which is basically to wait and see what goes wrong in America. I'm not usually a fan of European risk adversity. It reminds me of how my younger brother was waiting for me to touch the electric fence. But in this case, wait and see might indeed work out to our advantage. And if not, we'll always be here to give Americans lectures about responsibility, sustainability, and how our regulation-heavy bureaucracy prevents us from having fun. Artificial intelligence is really everywhere these days. If you want to learn more about how neural networks and large language models work, I recommend you check out the courses on Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.